Hey, what's up, YouTubes? This is the Asian Video Gamer. Um, back with another part. I know it's been a while, but I finally found some time to do this. So this is continuation of my uh, Black Mage playthrough. And right now I'm in Lost Bastille, going to the... I think this video is for going to... The sentry boss, rumination sentries boss, whatever. I don't remember what they're called. They have specific names. There's three of them. Um, I'm going to take the chance to talk about what's been going on, why I haven't posted videos for a couple of days, almost a week. Um, well, that's because I just closed or finalized the deal for my house. And I'm ready to move in. Well, not move in, but, you know, get stuff ready. And kind of set up my new house. Next chapter in my life. Right here, I'm having a lot of problems. I don't... Th these guys hit like a truck. And I should have healed. I should have backed up and healed before trying to, you know finish them off you're gonna see me fail a couple times here don't worry it's all fun <laughs> uh, just going back and forth in this hallway just ah uh, annoying and I lost all my souls because I I did not use my ring so tudo, kudos to me for being smart So, how's closing? What's... Why does it take so long? Is just signing a paper? No. You have to talk to so many people. You gotta to talk to lawyers. You gotta to talk to insurance. You gotta to talk to the bank. Everybody's gonna to have to say something to you. It's just crazy how much work that you have to do. And how much stuff you have to handle. It's crazy. It's not like you just pay money and get a house. It's not like that. And the lawyer fees, you know. I actually happened to do something really bad. Like, I forgot to give my lawyer some documentation on my identity. And uh, she had to go ahead with the papers with without confirming my name. Even though she asked me a couple times, I just completely forgot to give it to her. It's completely my fault. But because of that, I had to make last minute changes and holy shit, it cost me like 300 bucks. 300 bucks down the drain just for a paper change. Unbelievable, right? Oh well. Lesson to me, lesson learned. Ah, so stressful. And even though the house is closed, there's still stuff that needs to be fixed. And the timing of it is kind of awkward because I wanted to do some renovation. But if my builder doesn't fix the stuff that they promised to fix, I can't really start on the renovation because it's kind of conflicting things. So it's kind of annoying. It's very annoying. And I got to take you know, time off to schedule those guys in and you know just to do it it's kind of crazy that they promise you stuff that should have been fixed you know oh well whatever life goes on you gotta be careful about every single detail when you close a house especially new development you gotta close everything up you gotta go list by list Make sure everything is done. They don't care. They don't care what people talk to you about. It's not like a contract through vo verbal. Like if someone says something, they have to write it down for them to work. Otherwise, they're gonna do. They're not gonna do shit. It's kind of annoying though. But uh, at the same time, like I guess. It makes sense a little bit 
I don't know. Oh well. Enough with the house. Let's talk about something else more fun. So recently, Ultra Street Fighter 4 came to the PC and I got a version of it. And it's pretty hard to play because I suck at fighting games. I love them to death, but I can't play them for, for beans. I've actually had all uh, this vanilla Street Fighter 4 and Super Street Fighter 4. I didn't get the arcade edition, but because I at that point I was like, holy shit, this guy's Capcom's just milking us. And since Ultra Street Fighter 4 was for like 30 bucks on Steam, I was like, uh, maybe I'll give it a chance. And it's not bad. Um, playing it on Steam, like, it's more convenient for me because I can, uh, I, I only have fraps. I don't have a uh, HD capture card for our PlayStation. Maybe I should get it. Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know yet. I'm not too too keen in buying something for my PS3 because I'm not even sure if I'm going to get a PS4 anytime soon. So I've been dying to these guys a lot so right now I'm using Flames White to just kill them off and still I'm getting hit. They really... Oh my god. I just got killed again. These guys hit like a truck and there's like five of them came coming at you at the same time. It's insane. Like if you have a dagger, you're it's so hard to kill. Even though I intended for it to be like half an hour long. It's but it's okay. It's okay. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. I think I was I'm, I was getting a little bit frustrated there. It's like what the fuck. <laughs> Sorry you guys have to bear through this. But uh, let's get back to the uh, topic. Um, Street Fighter 4. Yes. I also have Mortal Kombat. Which I believe to be the better game. Mortal Kombat had good story. Well, it's adequate storyline, adequate character development. wasn't just the basic thing. A ton, sh a shit ton of modes. Kind of easy to play um, combos. Anybody can do those combos. I mean, anybody can do these combos in Street Fighter if you practice, but they're, the timing is a little bit harder. And you really have to practice to get it right. But, you know, like, in terms of overpoweredness, like, the, both games are have broken shits. Um, Street Fighter 4 has less broken shit, I guess. But I always loved Street Fighter and I used to play it on my Super NES and play it, you know, whenever I can. But obviously at that point I was just like pressing buttons and there's no tactics that I actually use or anything. So here I'm trying to lure out the raw guards instead of charging in, but... Apparently it doesn't work. There you go. One at a time. One at a time. Holy shit. I need to two hit these guys. Which is really annoying. Because they hit like a truck. But I got two of them down. This guy should be no problem. See? This is what happens yep. when I concentrate. Backstab. I Done. The backstab damage on the dagger is so good that, you know, making it your main weapon isn't that bad. Unless you're fighting a boss with nothing but your dagger. If you fight a boss with nothing but your dagger, then you might have a problem. So these knights Otherwise, it's not too bad. So anyways, um, back to this Street Fighter thing. Um, what to say? Well, you're going to be seeing a few videos from me regarding Street Fighter 4 it's not gonna be any like top tier game don't don't expect that because I can't even do a freaking combo in that game I'm such a noob in it 
But I hope you guys enjoy some of the gameplay. I'm going to show you how I get my ass kicked and how, you know, people online are crazy good at this game. Even though it just came out like a couple... Well, I mean like the game, the vanilla game been out for a lot, a few years. Veterans and new people, you can tell them really easily apart. So expect a few videos on, on that. That's all I'm going to say for now. I hope you guys will enjoy those videos of me getting my ass kicked. And occasionally me kicking someone really noob. <laughs> so here I'm about to summon a couple of friends to help me with this. I am not going to just play this offline. I will get some help from people because, you know, that's part of the game. I'm not super good at this game, so, you know, expect that. One last thing I want to talk about in this video is my new project coming up. My new project on videos. I have planned out and actually gotten the new game called Dynasty Warrior 8. Well, it's not new. It came out a year ago. Um, the game has a lot of characters that I really like. Although one of the features that it used to have, like creating your officer, like create your own officer, I don't think they have it in this game. I have to take a look. But if you can, if I can make my own officer, that would be freaking awesome because I can do all the characters that are really minor in the story. But it happens that the minor characters are really interesting. And I don't know why. But, or maybe I do know why, like, the, the developers don't know the story that well. But there's so many characters in there that isn't in the game that are quite important. And they choose to just leave it out. And it's, a, it's sad. So I'm going to be working on videos uh, regarding Dynasty Warriors, Romantic of the three kingdoms and do a basic lore and basic storytelling type videos because I love telling stories through videos it's so fun it's more fun than you know just let's play like this this is more like a vlog style video I mean you don't have to watch some of these you, you don't need to really watch me like spam spells at bosses and then win right but that's what that's all I'm doing right now is just spamming soul spear at people and you know someone's tanking it for me and the NPCs spamming soul arrows and shit you know it's not really that interesting in terms of visuals but once I start telling my stories in Dynasty Warriors I think that will be a lot of fun I hope you guys will stay tuned and enjoy those but for now I'm just gonna continue with my dark souls like i promised i f i will finish this character like try to get up get her up to lisandra or whatever but i'll have to see if i want to do the dlc stuff maybe i do maybe i don't because there's a lot of stuff there already to to be honest and this is a new game plus so everything here might be a little bit harder it's not that bad Especially when you can summon people. So just just to talk about this Dark Soul thing because I'm playing it here. Um, these sentries are actually spirits taking over a bunch of hollow armors. So when you defeat them, you know, they, they just turn to dust and disappear. But they're actually just spirits to begin with. Um, the significance of that is that this is like an overarching theme like King Vendrick somehow grabbed a treasure from the giants and now he's able to you know control these golems through souls so they're soul powered sentries that guard this prison now my theory is this prison is actually undeck Berg from Dark Souls 1. And why do I think that? First of all, there's a 
There's a bell. There's a bell tower here. Of all places. Right? And we all know from... Well, if you played Dark Souls 1, you know the bell was on top of the gargoyles. Near the gargoyles in... Undead Burg. And similarly, there's a gargoyle boss here that's guarding... Well, it's not really guarding the bell tower, but it's actually from the other side. You need to ring the bell before you can get to the boss. But that's besides the point. You know, this place is very um, lo uh, geographically located. I have no idea. But if you think about how close it is to the gargoyles and how these structures here, well, in order to it might be plausible that this place used to be the undead burg. Now, any other significance that can uphold the statement? Well, you have the dogs, you have a blacksmith somehow. There's a, there's a room for the blacksmith. And well, the forest, I believe, probably just sunk to the ground and it became the oceans. And all, all the people here that reside here, like, you know how there's in Undeadburg, like Lawtrek was, um, imprisoned in one of this, imprisoned there. Well, this is a prison, so I'm thinking they probably took more people and imprisoned them here, and it just through the ages became a, <laughs> I don't know, prison. Jail, uh, prison, or Bastille. Well, that's enough lore from me today. I'm not really good at explaining Dark Souls lore, but everything I said was not exactly true. You can com dispute it if you want, but that's all I have for today. Please, if you enjoy, please subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Kudos.